All right, guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna start working on our views. And by the end of this video, you guys are gonna learn how to make your very first API request and get actual JSON back. So it's gonna be awesome. So go ahead and pop open views.py. And just to save you guys some time, I actually copied all the imports we're gonna need. And I'll talk to you guys through in detail exactly whenever we are using these, what they do. But just real quick, um, you already know what this does right here. Gets an object or returns a 404 if the object doesn't exist. So let's say they requested uh, like tuna fish company and it didn't exist. Um, API view is just the way that we can make these normal views uh, return API data. Uh, this response is so we can send back a specific response status and it kind of works with this. So basically before we were just sending back HTML now we need to send back JSON and also whenever you just request the page and it returns a data normally that is called a 200 response everything went fine um, you guys already know what a 404 is that means hey you re you requested something but it doesn't exist anymore so maybe you requested someone's picture from Facebook and they deleted it so that's when you would get 404 and there are other ones too like um, uh, 400 means that the user was supposed to be doing something they shouldn't like it, the client and the server communicated correctly, but they like tried to request like the admin page or something. So anyways, that's what these are gonna do. And then we, of course, we just imported stock, all this information in serializers. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna set this up as a class-based view. So in other words, we're gonna set it up this way because we wanna have it where if the user requests, these URLs in different kinds of ways, then they handle them differently. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So for this first class, I'm just gonna name stock list and it's gonna inherit from API view. Now what I was talking about, I'm gonna go ahead and make two methods in here. So the first one is whenever they make a get request and the second one is whenever they make a post request. So for this example, I'm gonna have it where whenever they make a get request for stock list, it's just gonna return all of the stocks that we have, a list of all, pretty much everything in our database. Now, whenever they make a post request, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna let them create a new stock. So again, a post is kind of like submitting a form and get is just kind of like reading information. So I'll say that uh, this either lists all stocks or create a new one. Now, before I continue, I wanna mention this. Would you actually wanna set this up this way? Would you actually wanna put your create functionality into a separate class named stock create? Well, you may want to, but then how am I gonna explain class-based REST API view? So, and actually above all of these classes, I'm just gonna write a little um, demo URL. So again, whenever they type this URL in our website followed by stocks, it's gonna get all the stocks. And then later on in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to just get information about one stock using this URL or like Amazon or something like that. But for right now, I just keep things simple. All right, let me give myself a little bit more space to scroll around. All right, so for this get method, again, this is the one that's gonna return all of the stock information. So we need to pass in request, and instead of pass, which pretty much means do nothing, the first thing we're gonna do is we're pretty much just gonna go in our database and get all of the stocks. So I'll just say stock objects all. Simple as that, nothing new. So once we have all of our stock objects, all of these right here, we need to go ahead and serialize them. In other words, convert it to JSON. So I'm just gonna say serializer equals stock serializer. And this takes two parameters. The first one is what objects are you trying to serialize? Well, all of those stocks that we just got. And the second one is we need to specify that there are many of them. So it doesn't just try to return one JSON object. And after this, of course, remember every single view function, what it needs to do is it needs to return an H HTTP response. So this is gonna have JSON in it, but still it's HTTP response is being sent over the internet. 
So we just return a response. And what is the information in our response? Well, just that serializer data. In other words, just the JSON data. Simple enough. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. This URL is almost working. The one other thing that we need to do is we just need to specify it in URLs right here. And we actually need to import some other stuff. I forgot just to make sure that these URLs are compatible for basically an API. So REST framework, where are you at? URL patterns, imports, format suffix patterns, and also from that view we just made, we actually need to import it. So from companies, import views. All right, so URL patterns, format suffix patterns, URL patterns. And I'll explain later on once we create a bunch more, like for updating um, information and deleting it, then I'll explain that. But for right now, I just kind of want to get things started. So we'll keep the admin since that's the proper URL for that still. But now we need to add another one for stocks. So again, remember the structure we define right here. So when they go to admin, it's going to take them to the admin panel. Whenever they go to stocks, it's just going to return a list of stocks. So instead of this, we can actually keep things real simple and say views stock list as view. So again, what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, go ahead and let me get rid of this. Go in your views to the class stock list and return these as a view. Simple enough. So now check this out. Instead of our admin panel, we can go to stocks and boom, look at that. And again, you can actually just do this over Python or you can do it with your iPhone or Android. Basically, whenever you throw in this URL, you can connect to your website's database and get information from it on any device in the world. So I'm gonna do it with the browser right now, but actually check this out. So this is a program that I have and it's called Postman. And basically what you can do is you can just uh, send different kinds of requests like post request, put patch, delete. And I'm just gonna make a simple get request from here, send it and check it out. So this would, you know, kind of more clearly resemble using this information in a program like a piece of software or something like that. So we now can connect to our database, get the data, and then we can either analyze it or do whatever the heck we want with it. So that is the basics of how to make a simple get request. And in the next videos, I'll show you guys how to add new stocks using the simple request and also how you can just retrieve one stock, how you can edit stocks that are already in there, how you can delete them, how to have admin permissions so you just don't have everyone deleting them. A bunch of crap. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. I'll see you next time.